What is up, beautiful coding family? It's me, your girl, Victoria Chop. So as you can see, I'm in my little room and I'm getting ready to do a screen share. So hopefully tonight I will add some value to your life uh, because that is what the channel is all about. Like I like to have fun, but tonight I'm going to actually talk about something educational. So we'll talk about an operative report tonight. So the video is how to code an op report. Okay, so this was requested by one of my subscribers, Brenda, Miss Brenda Whiteside, who is one of my oldies but goodies. She was around when my channel first started out, as a lot of you were. And um, I really appreciate all you guys. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so here we go. Can you guys see my screen? I hope you guys can see my screen. Let's see. Why am I not in the screen? I guess you guys can see my screen. I'm assuming that you can anyway. So, okay. So tonight we're going to talk about an operative report. And I'm trying not to make this video too long, you guys. Although you really, really need this. Because if you are preparing to take your um, CPC exam, the format of the CPC exam actually will be a lot of this. Um, which is operative reports and coding scenarios and reading through the report and picking out the CPT codes and picking out the ICD-10 codes. A lot of that exam is this way. So you need to understand this. So I'm going to tell you like my little spiel on uh, operative reports. So if you're going to be doing this type of coding, you would be a surgery coder. Okay. So currently I'm not a surgery coder. I'm an outpatient coder, but surgery coder is like a small little carve out of outpatient coding. Okay. And normally when you go to a facility, they have a set, a set or a select group of coders who do who who just do outpatient surgeries. Okay. That's how it normally is wherever I have been. That has been my experience. And normally that is how it goes. So I don't really do a lot of the outpatient surgery stuff. Um, have I done it before? Absolutely. Um, that was one of my first jobs starting out. I was an orthopedic surgery coder one. Um, that was my very first job that I had the title as a coder. Okay. So um, it was probably, I want to say the hardest coding job I've ever had as well. Okay. Because coding this stuff it's not easy, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into this because I don't want to make this video past 30 minutes. So let's just pray um, that I can not make it that long because after, after it passes that time, people start tuning out. And I don't need you to tune out. I need you to tune in and learn this, okay? So I'm going to link all the stuff that I'm talking about um, to, the, to the note, okay? So you will see. Like I'm gonna link this note that you see on the screen. Uh, it will also be linked down there. And I, I'm linking two other additional things that I pulled from the um, coder's desk reference um, for my encoder. I printed that and I'm going to link those two notes as well. So you can see what I'm talking about. So anyway, this is the trigger point. Um, the, the patient has a right ring finger tr trigger digit. So he has trigger finger um, in his right ring finger, which is the right fourth digit, okay? And so whenever you see an operative report, you know, the date is going to be there. The pre-op diagnosis is going to be there. The post-op diagnosis is going to be there. And what the what procedures were performed are going to be on the report, okay? So this is pretty much self-explanatory. Pre-op means uh, before they even cut you, <laughs> okay? And so I guess the difference would be some procedures are diagnostic, which means that um, when you go in for the surgery, like they're trying to diagnose something, okay? So in those cases, the pre-op and the post-op diagnosis might not be the same um, as in a patient with a lump in the breast, a female with a lump in the breast, you know, pre-operatively, pre it would be a lump in the breast, but maybe after, after the surgery, post-operatively, they might find out it's cancer, okay? So then these two diagnoses here, would be completely different from each other, okay? So that's that. So then you have what they're going to do, which in this case, they're doing a right ring finger, A1 pulley release, 
and um, a right ring finger digital block. So apparently this is working on the fingers. So this is an orthopedic doctor doing an orthopedic surgery, okay? And then you have the surgeon, you have who, who is doing the procedure, um, which is John Doe in this case, and you have your anesthesia, what kind of anesthesia they are using to complete this procedure, you know, because sometimes you get um, mat anesthesia, sometimes you get conscious sedation, sometimes you just get a little digital block, okay? Then you have specimens here. That means, you know, if they're going to cut something off of you and send it to pathology, that will be documented under the specimens. And then you have the indications for the procedure. And the indications mean, why are you getting the surgery done? Okay, so not to be too long, let's just kind of read over this really quick, kind of go over it quick. The patient is in, the patient is an XX0 right hand dominant male who presented with pain in the right warp digit that started shortly after undergoing bilateral carpal tunnel release. He had good resolution of his symptoms after his carpal tunnel release. However, the pain in the right ring finger was limiting recovery. Clinically, this was consistent, consistent with a trigger finger with tenderness to palpation over the A1 pulley with a palpable nodule and mild locking. After failing a course of conservative treatment, the patient decided to proceed with surgical intervention consisting of right ring finger A1 pulley release. Okay, so the patient had um, carpal tunnel surgery, apparently, and um, maybe the carpal, carpal tunnel surgery worked for a while, and then he started having problems. So then he went back into the doctor and they figured out that now they have to do another procedure to correct whatever's going on. So it's now he has his trigger finger, okay? So then you come, come down here to the operative findings and that's just kind of, you know, what they found during the operation, okay? And then you have the description of the procedure, which is very important. So I'm gonna tell you that code surgeries can get very confusing because normally like if I was going to code something, if I was coding this note, I would go right here first and I would look and see what is being done. And then I would go ahead and get out my um, CPT book and start looking up my procedures. So you would need this book to code procedures, which is your 2021 CPT book, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna tell you how coders can go wrong and how, how confusing surgery can be, all right? And you have to be careful um, because again, this is a procedure, okay? So we're looking for procedure terms. So in this case, release is the keyword because normally when you're looking up these words, it's a keyword that you're gonna look up first, just like when you're looking up an ICD-10 code and you have heart failure. You know, you're going to look up failure. Failure is the key word, and then you'll look up heart. The same thing with um, procedures. So release, in this case, would be my keyword. So for laughs and giggles, look up the word release, okay? But this can be confusing, and this, can, and this is why you can't just look solely right here to try to figure things out. You have to actually read this whole note, and that's why coders get paid so much money. But just look up the word release. Let's just do that. Look up the word release. Let's do that really quickly. And then you're gonna learn a very valuable lesson. Why well, you can't just um, look up a word and go with it. So if you look up the word release, you're gonna see that you have a lot of terms under the word release, starting with the word capsule and ending with the word tendon, okay? So we know this is a release of the A1 pulley, okay? And so what is the A1 pulley? You, and that's why anatomy and physiology play a great part in medical coding. So we know if you go down and read the note that um, they're incising around the MP flexion crease, okay? MP flexion crease means um, metacarpal phalangeal. So it's like a joint, right? Like, like a joint, like a, like a tendon, you know? So if you try to go and look up the word release, well, if you look up the word release and you try to find A1 pulley, number one, you're not gonna find A1 pulley under the word release. You're just not, if you look that, if you look that up in your C CPT book, and even if you try to say, hey, you know, uh, the A1 pulley is a part of the um, metacarpal phalangeal joint, you know, you don't even see 
Well, you do see metacarpal phalangeal joint under release, but that still is not going to land you on the appropriate code because that's 26135. Now, I got something to say about that, but that's still not the appropriate code. So what you have to do is figure out under here what is going on, okay? So you have to read operative reports. You can't just skim over the note. Like that doesn't work. You have to really figure out what's going on. So right here, it tells you that a transverse incision was created in the MP flexi increase, okay? And so I just wanna show you guys, let me just stop the share for one second. So I can um, show you where the, uh, I thought I had that up, 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 up. Maybe I didn't. Oh, that kind of sucks, y'all. Oh, we show our windows. Hold on one second. I thought I had that up. Okay, there it is. There it is, I think. I wanted to show y'all where the, um, that is not what I'm looking for. And I don't even have my Google up. Okay, let's just see something. Hold on. Yeah. There it is. The MP flexion crease is right here. It's this little part of the hand. So I just want you guys to see like, what part of the body that the surgery is actually being performed on. Um, you're gonna need to know this, like when you're coding any type of surgery. So that's why anatomy and physiology is so vitally important to coders and you can't get by without it, okay? So now that I've showed you that, we know where the provider is cutting, you know, what part he's, he's incising. So he's incising, incising along this crease here, okay? I just wanted to show you guys that. Now, let me get back to my note. Yeah. Okay. So now we know that he's incising around that particular joint, you know, overlying the fourth ray. Dissection was carried down through the skin and subcutaneous tissues, and a combination of blunt and sharp dissection was utilized to identify the flexor sheath. The digital nerves were retracted to either side of the sheath, and the A1 pulley was exposed. It was completely incised from its most proximal extent distally into the most proximal aspect of the A2 pulley. The palmar pulley was also released. The flexor tenders were retracted from the wound with a rag, from the wound with a rag nail retractor. Mild degenerative changes were appreciated. A small amount of synovitis was sharply incised. So the two key words that you need to focus on is incision and probably the word excised, okay? So when you're reading operative reports, you can't just depend solely on here. Because as you've seen, when you try to look up the word release in A1 pulley, you couldn't find anything. And that's going to happen to you, okay? And so you will need to go in your CPT book and look up the word incision, okay? So just go in your CPT book and look up the word incision really quick. Incision, if you have your 2021 book, it's going to be page 1074 in the back of your book. So when you look up incision, you're gonna to go to the body part, which is finger. And then we're gonna look up tendon sheath, okay? We're gonna look up tendon sheath um, because this is where the provider is operating on. This is what the, I'm sorry, this is what the provider is operating on. They're identifying the flexor sheath. So you're gonna look up again, incision, and then finger and then tendon sheath. And there is your keywords in the note. So, you know, you have to be like a detective and figure this stuff out, okay? So once you do that, you will find that you have CPT code 26055. So I want you to go to 26055, okay? 26055 in your CPT book. And when you go to 26055, the description says tendon sheath incision, example for trigger finger. Okay. So that would lead me to believe that is the appropriate code. Why am I saying that? Because the, the patient has right ring finger trigger digit. Okay. So he has trigger finger. 
and the CPT book description is saying this procedure, this procedure is for trigger finger, okay? So that is the code that I would go with, it's 26055. Um, and I would use a modifier F8 for the right hand fourth digit, okay? But um, anywho, now that you know that you have to find keywords in order to figure this stuff out, um, that was that's the key takeaway I want you to remember. I've told you that you also probably want to go and look up the word excise. Okay. And this is the tricky part. And this is why where why you want to, why you're going to have to, you know, research and use reference books. Okay. And when I say reference books, I mean your um, CPT coders disc reference. That is a book that a lot of coders have. Let me just show you guys what that is really quick. If I can find it, let's see, share the screen. I had it up. I had it up. Okay. Let's see, y'all. I had it up over here somewhere. That I think it's right here. Get off my screen. Yeah, that book right there is a um, coder's disc reference. There. And that's actually a pretty good price, 139. But this, this book is very important for people who are coding surgeries. Now, I don't have one and I'm gonna tell you why. Because number one, I don't code surgeries, <laughs> okay? I'm an outpatient coder who does e &Ms, labs, radiology, all that good stuff. But um, procedures, I don't do a lot of procedures, okay? But even if I did, whenever you start working at a facility, you will have something built into your software called an encoder. And the encoder has this book built into it, okay? And so that's the reason why, you know, most facilities nowadays don't even waste their time buying people these books because their software has the books already built into it, okay? So I'm just saying, but this book is actually like a diamond, okay, for real. Because when I was an orthopedic surgery coder, I leaned heavily on this book because what this book does is give a description of each procedure in the CPT book, okay? So you can compare and contrast. So you can look at that note and then look at that book and look at the code and see if what that book is saying matches what that report is saying. And that's how you can kind of figure out, well, is it this code or is it that code? Okay. So anyhow, I I relied heavily on that book when I was coding ortho. So I just want to show you guys something real quick. Let me get back to my note and I'm going to wrap this thing up. Uh, let's go back over here to this procedure. Okay. So anywho, as you can see, if you read down a little bit further, it says a small amount of centivitis with sharply sized. Well, a, a small amount of a small amount of centivitis with a size means they're taking something off. Okay. So they're removing something. So again, you would think, well, that's another procedure because if you are familiar with your uh, med terminology, you know, itis, synovitis, itis means inflammation. Um, and that would be inflammation of the synopium. So something was inflamed and they took it off, okay? And so that could be a procedure, but you wanna make sure, you know, that you are correct in coding that. So when I first looked at this, I was thinking, well, that's like 26135 because is, is it a synovectomy? Because ectomy means removal of the synovium. So the, the removal of the synovium is 26135. So at first I'm like, hmm, that's, that might be right. But I'm gonna tell you why it's not right. It's because you're gonna look at your coder's desk reference and you're gonna see if that procedure 26135 actually matches what this is saying. That is such a small, short sentence, okay? A small amount of synovitis will sharply be a size, blank. You know, they're not saying anything else about it. So let's just see what the description for 26135 says um, per the coder's desk reference. Okay. And so I pulled that up for y'all. Uh huh. Let's see. Share my screen. And there it is. Share. Okay. The code 26135 per the coder's desk reference means the physician removes the synovial membrane from the metacarpal phalangeal joint releases intrinsic musculature and reconstructs the extensor hood. The physician incises, uh, incises the skin, 
overlying the affected joint and dissects down through the soft tissues to the joint capsule. The joint capsule is incised and the synovium, the inner membrane of the articular capsule that lines the joint cavity is removed. Intrinsic muscle contractions are released by exposing the extensor aponeurosis and incising the fibers at their insertion down into the tendon with a parallel, parallel incision while preserving their transverse fibers. The adequacy of the dissection is tested and adjusted before the remaining flat part of the extensor hood is resected. The incision is closed with running sutures and a plastic and a plaster splint is applied to hold the metacarpal phalangeal joints in extension, but allow full movement of the interphalangeal, interphalangeal joints. Report each finger separately. So that is a big long description for 26135, which is the removal of the synovial membrane. Number one, they didn't say they removed the whole synovial membrane. Okay. And they didn't give me any description in that provider's note that looks like this. So when I got to thinking about it, should I code that? Because I use my coder's desk reference, I would have to say, no, I would not code that. All right. So now let me just stop the share for that and show y'all guys one more thing. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the, the um, coder's desk reference for the other code. Okay. If I can find it. Is it here? Yeah, that's here. Okay. 26055, the physician makes an incision in a tendon sheath to release tension in the tendon. For example, this procedure would be performed to relieve trigger finger, okay? The physician incises the skin overlying the tendon and dissects to the tendon sheath. The sheath is incised lengthwise. The incision is sutured in layers, okay? So that procedure matches perfectly for what this note is saying, okay? And so... The main point, the main takeaway, why I tried to show you guys those two inserts out of the coder's desk reference is that this book can actually help you figure out surgery codes. And you really either need this book or you need a freaking encoder, okay, to figure things out. So the correct code, again, is 26055. But I just wanted to show you guys that. But again, another takeaway, you must read the note. It's no getting by reading this full note, okay? And that's the reason why, in most cases, surgery coders make more money as well because they have so much more to do. And um, I'm not a fan of this type of coding. Uh, but it is people, normally, like, <laughs> normally people either like outpatient, they like inpatient, or they like surgery. You know, normally you don't have an outpatient coder who just loves surgery or a surgery coder who loves inpatient. Like everybody kind of finds their, their niche and they get in it and they stay in it. Okay, I'm just telling you the truth. All right. So anywho, let me get out of there and we're going to do one more thing and I'm going to shut this down. So as you can see, if you go back up to the top of the operative report, um, let's move back up there to the top. A1 pulley, is this it? Yeah. Let's move back to the top. This uh, patient also had a right finger digital block. OK, so if you got if you try to go to the word um, block, just try to look up the word block in your, in the, your book. Let's see where that lands us. Because I'm trying to give you guys practice in how you actually look things up. Okay? So if you go to the word block, you don't see anything. There is nothing under the word block. Okay? So you have to, you know, because I'm a season coder, like I understand that a digital block is a nerve block, okay? I already knew that before I picked up a book or anything. Like, a digital block is a nerve block. They are blocking the nerve so you won't feel the pain, okay? Okay, so you see that it's listed here under the anesthesia. Like, this is a type of anesthesia. They're blocking that nerve so you won't feel the pain when you're getting the procedure done. So instead of looking up the word block, I'm going to look up um, nerve block. look up nerve block You see that didn't tell you to look up the word nerve block it just says digital block so you just have to know that it, that a digital block means nerve block so look up nerve block okay and when you look up nerve block you see the term injection and so what you would want to do is go to go down to peripheral okay you want to go to injection peripheral again this note is not going to tell you to look there either Okay, and so peripheral means um, away from the center of the body. 
So peripheral nerves are any nerves away from the center. This is the center of the body. So apparently, if you know, if it's blocking nerves in your fingers, it's away from the center. And so that's why I say peripheral nerve block. Okay. So the correct code for that nerve block would be 64450. Okay. So go to the book and look at look up 64450. And then we're going to wrap it up because I think I've been on here too long and I still got work to do. But I want to add value to my channel because my channel is my baby and I made it this channel. And I want to add value to the people that are on this channel. So let's see. So 64450 is a injection of an anesthetic agent and or steroid other peripheral nerve branch. Okay, and so that would be the correct code. So the codes for, for this procedure are going to be 26055 modifier F8 and also 6, um, 64450 for the nerve block. Okay, and so the diagnosis code, if you're going to pick up your ICD-10 book real quick and we'll shut this down, go to um, look up the term trigger finger. Look up the term trigger finger because this person has a trigger finger and we know that from right here, from the post-op diagnosis. That's where you get your diagnosis from, okay? So if the patient had any type of biopsy, um, then you would have to wait to the biopsy before it come back before you could code this procedure, okay? So let's look up the word trigger finger. And when we look that up, we're going to look at the ring finger, okay? We're going to look at the ring finger, because that is the fourth digit, all right? And this is how you count digits, one, two, three, four. That's the fourth digit, the ring finger. But anyway, that is M6534. And when you look in your book, M6534. We did. I hope y'all will look at this up with me. Trigger finger, right finger. Okay, so it's going to be M65, M65341. That is your ICD 10 code, M65341. That is trigger finger, uh, right hand, fourth digit. Okay, so those would be your. CPT codes and your ICD-10 codes for this procedure. So that is how you code an operative report. So the key takeaway, you guys, that I want you guys to know is that don't be fooled by just looking up the procedures. You know, don't think that you can just come here, look up this word, flip to the back of that book without going through that note. That's a no-no. It's gonna land you on the wrong code, okay? Another key takeaway, always do your research. Your CPT coder's desk reference is very handy dandy. If you don't have the book when you're coding surgeries, make sure you have the, have the encoder. Because again, as you can see how I showed you guys the descriptor from 26135 and the, two, and, the, and the descriptor from 26055, it lets you know like which one we were to choose, right? Okay, so that's another key takeaway. And um, you just have to be very detail oriented, okay? You have to read this note. That's that's it, period. Like you can't get you can't get away from it. And you have to know your anatomy and your physiology, right? Um, you have to know your uh, abbreviations. Like if you didn't know your abbreviations, you wouldn't know the MP stands for metacarpal phalangeal, right? So that's the reason why coders have to take those pre-courses, um, their anatomy and their midterm. You're probably like, why we gotta take all that stuff? But this is why you have to take it. Okay, that is exactly why you have to take it. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I got work to do, honey. I got to make my money. But um, again, I'm trying to add value to this channel and let you guys know that I'm not, I don't play all the time, okay? Sometimes I actually like to come on here and teach you guys something, okay? So if you enjoyed the video at the end, let me know, you know, and I'll try to do another op report uh, because you will see this when you go take your um, CPT book and then... Um, when you go take your CPT book, when you go take your CPC exam, CPC exam, I'm sorry, you'll see this type of stuff. Like this is what will be on it. So, and then you won't have no Google. You won't got no computer to be Googling it, honey. You just have to have this. This is your computer. Okay. So I'm out of here, you guys. And I'll see you guys later on in the week. Gotta work, honey. Gotta make much money. I'll be back later. Bye.
I hope I can cut this off. Let me stop the share. I always screw this part up. Okay, stop.